What is going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another edition of On the Road to Victory. I am your host, Jimmy Smith, and I hope you're all having yourselves a great start to your week. What a weekend it was. What a fantastic draft. Eagle signed Mackay Becton yesterday. Wild times. But a lot of undrafted free agents, tryouts being announced throughout this time. Trying to do my best to keep you up to date. And, of course, at work today, all kinds of crap going on. I thought I was going to get home, be able to put that show I got together, uh, and I had to add seven more players, as you just saw on the front page there. So, holy sweet Lord, uh, we've got 17 players to break down here, and that is exactly what we're going to do. Take a look at these guys, and we've got seven that are actually signed as undrafted free agents on this roster, and then 10 guys that will be trying out at rookie minicamp, May 5th, 6th. We'll see if they can make the team. And, um, you know, that's just what this is. We actually waived four players, though, to sign all these guys. Mackay Becton, the undrafted guys. So uh, let's take a look at the four players here. Noah Ellis, Griffin Hebert, Tijuan Mullen, and Lesidus Smith. So opened up some room, and we now have some space to add these guys, have some competition. And obviously, you'll have to let some other people go if any of these tryouts make it. But Appreciate you taking the time. We are not live, but I'd still love to hear from you down below. Maybe you have some more information on some of these guys because some of the stuff I have uh, very little on, but uh, I'd love to hear from you. And I am excited about this, you know, roster, obviously, but we'll take a look with all these guys, uh, the ones that are signed on this depth chart. I've got an update for you at the end here. So let's get it started. Let's rock and roll. Again, love to hear from you. Appreciate you tuning in, hitting that like button, subscribing, sharing this stuff. Cannot thank you enough for all of the support, but let's take a look at the full list here. So the guys on the left here, you've got yourself the undrafted free agent signings, and then you can see the 10 rookie mini camp tryout guys that will be here. And I just showed you Griffin Hebert, who was uh, waived, but he will actually be at the mini camp. He'll get a chance to actually make the squad. He had to be let go, though. Now, those other three guys that I mentioned, Noah Ellis and um, Mullen and Smith, We'll see if they get a shot at the rookie mini camp here uh, to, you know, try to show something one last time. But uh, for sure, Griffin Hebert will be there. We know that. But let's jump into this. Let's start it off with one of the guys, and he's from the International Players Program. And, well, he's never played football, but uh, he played rugby. And we all know sometimes that can work out well. Now, he is actually trying out to be a punter and kicker. We are clearly good at the kicker position. Punter, feel pretty good. We brought Braden Mann back, but little competition never hurts anybody, and clearly he is a developmental piece. So 6'5", 238, big dude. But uh, best of luck to him, and we'll see what he can do this offseason. But, uh, yeah, uh, obviously their jobs are not on the line because of this. This is just, you know, part of something they do for the rookie minicamp, give these kids a shot. We'll see what he can do, and maybe he wows some people, gets an opportunity somewhere on a team that needs a player, or maybe he's so good that you just have to have him, and he beats out Braid Man. I don't know, man, but uh, just keep in mind, Never played before, so we'll see how he does. Now, somebody who has played before, retired, but last year tried to come back with the Chiefs. Didn't happen. This year, going to try to come back with the Eagles. Now, see some people getting worked up about this. Dude, it is a tryout. He's trying out. He's not on the roster, so it, we'll see if he even gets a chance. Obviously, that 4.22, people will love that 40 time. Oh, yeah, but I think that last time you saw him, he started with the Giants. These are the stats from then a couple of years back, so... I think, obviously, he has some talent because he's fast, but I always bring him up when I'm talking about people that speed does not mean everything. You got to be able to actually run routes, have good hands, and the things that he is definitely lacking. So we will see if he can bring anything this upcoming weekend, and I, best of luck to him, but I highly doubt he makes this roster. But um, again, best of luck. We, you never know what could happen. And then you've got a track and field guy who played for the Ohio State Football Club, and was at Trinity Western before that. Um, and he is part of that international player program as well. And uh, look, not much on him, but uh, he had seven catches, 231 yards, four touchdowns, and 33 yards per catch the one year he played. And uh, that was the best among players that played in seven-plus games. And look, he's got speed. We uh, can see that. And he ran a 4.3640. He can help you maybe in the return game. So um, look, an intriguing piece that uh, you give a shot. But uh, again, it is a tryout. Now, Griffin Hebert, we've talked about him before because we had him here last year. Uh, I think we brought him before the Cardinals game in December at the end there. But um, look, you've uh, got a guy that you know was undrafted last year, signed by the Seahawks. Then we brought him on. We talked about that, but he is somebody that'll get a shot. And 
with his size, we've talked about it. Maybe he converts, plays a little tight end. So maybe he gets a little work there this weekend. Maybe that would give him a be better opportunity. But, uh, you know, this is one of those tryouts. But that was the last of the offensive tryouts. Now we're going to get into the defensive tryouts here. And today uh, or yesterday, maybe it was Jacob Roberts was reported. I don't think I posted that one, but I've just... So lost with so much of this stuff. All these guys are here on the show. I don't know if I posted all of them, but uh, I got all the stats I possibly could try to keep up with the stuff. But North Carolina A&T, and then he transferred to Wake Forest, and you can see um, his stats from there, 32 games, 119 solo tackles. Uh, he had 30 tackles for a loss, nine and a half sacks, six block kicks, uh, 10 passes deflected, five interceptions. So this kid, from what I saw, you know, he seems like, you know, your prototypical linebacker, he runs a 4 seven forty, so he's not like some super speedy guy or anything. But last year, he had 10 tackles for loss, six sacks, 83 tackles. Thought he had good gap leverage. Uh, he looked well in the run support. Had uh, good coverage kills, I thought, and uh, decent instincts, it looked like. So, again, I don't know too much about Jacob Roberts here. But from the little I was able to learn, I, I thought it was decent for a kid to come in and try out. We'll see. Maybe he can make the practice squad. But you give these young guys an opportunity. Um, and again, this is the rookie mini camp, so he's not even on the 90 man roster. Maybe he's good enough to make it, but best of luck this weekend. Now we're getting into some secondary pieces that are trying out. And this kid, Sean Stevens, this is somebody that when I was reading about him, Steelers fans seem to be obsessed with this kid. He is Joey Porter Jr.'s cousin. I don't know if he's Joey Porter's nephew, but that's just how I kept seeing it worded. But uh, you can see he had eight interceptions. I don't know why it says 11 games. I meant to put not available. I couldn't find it exactly, but uh, my apologies there. I guess I didn't change that. 14 passes deflected, but you can see um, this is a kid that he had some kick returns, so he can help you in the return game. Uh, I thought that, you know, from what I saw, 4-3 speed, so he's quick. He was second behind Quenyon Mitchell at the Combine with 19 reps on the bench press. So you look at the level of competition, that's what scares people, you know, uh, Western Liberty and then uh, – going to Ferris State. So I get that. But man, being that tough, being that fast, that can always help you, help you in the return game. Having those eight picks, uh, you know, in a year, I think that's pretty fantastic. So uh, those are his last year stats. I guess that is actually 11 games. My apologies. That was right. It was the experience I got wrong. Jeez, it has been so nuts trying to work and keep up with all this draft stuff. And then I always forget about the undrafted guys because then it's more chaos. But uh Hope you guys appreciate this stuff and enjoy it. But uh, let's get into the next cornerback here. Tavian McCarthy, another cornerback brought in um, that a uh, bigger guy. You know, you had six foot Sean Stevens. Now, you know, you're looking at a guy, McCarthy. Um, apparently, I didn't click it. Jeez, 5'9", 190. Looking at a smaller dude, uh, five years experience out of northern Michigan. And then last played for Mercer there. But um, he's a, actually a stocky dude for that 5'9 size. And uh, he had a top 10 vertical, 44 inches. But that height, that could definitely, uh, you know, hinder him. Uh, maybe he tries out a little nickel. Maybe he can help out, you know, in special teams. Safe. That's what he'll have to do here. But a couple interceptions, passes deflected, sacks. This kid tries to get in there. Um, I, I couldn't find too much on him here. But uh, look, a uh, little guy that's going to get a chance here to prove in, you know, a very crowded secondary room. But bringing in these kids that, you know, uh, have some talent and Hey, why not up next? We've got Cedric Anderson and a 4.33 speed on this kid, 34 inch vertical, 82 and a half inch wingspan. So that kind of stuff sticks out to you. Five interceptions, six passes deflected. Couldn't find the amount of games there. Um, and look, I, I thought that with that kind of talent, yeah, he went to Grambling state, but you never know, man, you find these diamonds in the rough and, uh, you know, Shout out to Lurie and Roseman looking at some of these HBCUs and picking up guys like Cedric Anderson here. And I think that, you know, with that kind of talent, 6'3", 195 pound size, it, why the hell not? You never know. You could find a diamond in the rough here. So he'll be trying out this weekend. And I'm looking forward to seeing what these kids can do. Up next, I've got Kenny Churchwell the third, also listed as a defensive back. So both these guys could be safeties, nickel corners. Um, but I think, you know, Kenny Churchwell, the third year, this is another intriguing pickup. Couldn't find too much on him, but I actually liked what I got to see, what little tape I saw. And, you know, he actually seemed to be getting around, looking like a real safety out there, hitting people. That's what we need here. You know, somebody with some ferocity here, and he's 6'2", 205. Love the size. Spent six years there at UCLA. You can see I got his whole career stats here. 
And I thought that he looked decent. So again, rookie mini camp tryout. These kids are just trying out. People always freak out about this stuff, but they're just trying out. Now, the last of the tryouts, number 10 here, Kanayan Williams. And this kid out of Tulsa didn't have much starting experience. Uh, so, of course, those stats aren't going to jump off the page at you. But um, look, uh, 4.5 speed. He was somebody that was a team captain. I thought he looked decent. I, I don't think there was anything that jumped off the page at me where, uh, yeah, and I couldn't find barely anything. So, again, I'm intrigued to see if any of these tryouts can really do anything. If any of you guys know anything, you watch these schools, you know more about some of these people, you want to add something, I would love to hear from you, some of these tryouts. And if any of them actually make the squad, we will get in depth with it, break it all down, but try to find what I possibly could for you out there. But now let's get into the actual undrafted free agent signings. And we could only have seven this year. And we actually had to, as you just saw, let people go because, well, we just didn't have much room. We signed all those reserve future contracts, obviously drafted a bunch of people, nine. So a lot of spots taken up. And I know some of you sickos are waiting for that cap space stuff. And I've already given that number to you. It's pretty close to that, but I'll give you an update, all that stuff. But we're going to get to know these kids first. Then we'll break down all that great stuff. But, um, Let's get into this, and we're going to start it off with one of my top fits for the late round undrafted pool. And uh, man, not only do we get seven out of nine draft picks that we talked about here, but we talked about two of these undrafted free agents that we got. So two out of the seven, <laughs> holy crap! But Howie, go ahead and give me a call if you're watching, brother. I would love to be in that room. But uh, let's jump into these, and we talked about a Nim Donqua and. I thought this was somebody just 6'8", 353, freakish athleticism. Why not give a shot to a kid like this? And for me, when you're looking at someone like him, he gave up zero sacks. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I messed that up. That was the wrong guy. I think it was only like a couple sacks last year. But he's just a monster. I almost get, I was talking about the other linebacker. I, I get lost here. But uh, he is a huge dude. He's got great movement for his size. Very functional. Uh, he is just, dude, he's got great strength, awareness, long arms. He was in the 99th percentile, obviously, with his height and arm length, 35.13 inches there. And holy crap, but does have limited range and got to work a little on his run blocking. But I thought he did good at both those things. But again, you know, he was at Howard, uh, somebody that can play left and right tackle. So maybe a dabble at guard, but that's pretty huge for a guard. But um I think this kid, just with his freakish athleticism, you got to get guys like this and give them to Jeff Stoutland, see what he can mold and do with them. And I, this is why I had him as one of my top fits, you know, in the undrafted class. And I'm excited to see him here. I really can't believe it, man. Howie, you son of a, let's get into the next guy. Got Lieb. And uh, I'm going to say a ZJ. And he is out of Maryland. First played for Frostburg State. And, uh, Look, this is a kid that had zero sacks last year and played in 11 games and had 10 starts at right tackle, but can play left tackle. He was a three-time first-team All-Mountain East, and he can actually, you know, probably play a little bit of guard. He's not too huge, 6'5", 320. Looks like he could possibly do that. He's got good for footwork, hand usage. Thought he was a pretty good athlete. That's what the Eagles are looking for. He was a good pass protector, good against the run block from what I saw, and just with that size, uh, I think that maybe they could try him at guard. But uh, intrigued to see what these young offensive linemen can do as undrafted signings. And, hey, Jeff Stoutland, if anybody's going to find a way to, you know, bring out the talent, it's going to be him. Now, up next, we've got ourselves a Georgia Bulldog. And I know that, you know, a lot of people wanted a certain, you know, Georgia guys in this draft. And, hey, that's all right, man. I know we like to take good players. So if they're good, we're going to take them. And, we got a kid that's pretty good that's undrafted. And if you're looking for 40 times, it's only a 4.62, but that's because this dude's really one of those downhill runners. He's got great bursts, yards after contact, and he's good in pass protection. Now, the one thing I noticed, he doesn't have a lot of moves. He kind of just runs you over, uses his stiff arm. Um, that doesn't always translate in the NFL until they bulk up a little. I think this kid could do that, 6'2", 225. So I think the sky's the limit for this kid. I know that... Eagles fans fall in love with these, you know, power backs every time we sign them. But look, last year, 121 carries, 790 yards, six and a half yards per rush, 14 touchdowns. And that's, you know, 23 total touchdowns in his career. There were only four starts, obviously some damn good backs in front of him. But I think that this kid, you know, uh, 
one of those guys that doesn't have much wear and tear on him, only 297 rushes, but over 1,800 yards, 6.2 yards per carry. Now he can catch the ball, but he doesn't really help you too much in that game. If he works on that, he's good in pass protection. This kid could be a steal, and he could compete. Maybe he makes the practice squad excited to see what Kendall Milton does. Up next, got a wide receiver, Talik Keaton out of Marshall. And this kid, you know, this is somebody I couldn't find too much on. Runs a 4-4-40. Somebody that brings versatility can help you in the return game, as you can see. Has some rushes. So, hey, look, if you're one of those quick guys that can help out in a plethora of ways, that's going to take you somewhere. 11 and a half yards per catch, 18.3 per game because, well, not getting too many there. So 26 starts, so half of the game's there. Um, but I think, you know, all these kids, if they, you know, can help in the return game, that's going to be a big step for them. But uh, getting to be a crowded room there. So we'll see uh, how he does. Maybe a guy like Griffin Hebert takes his job back, but we will find out this upcoming weekend. Up next, we got ourselves another tight end. So McAllen Castles out of Tennessee here and 6'4", 249 pounds and Last year had five touchdowns. He runs a four, six, eight, has a 37 and a half inch vertical. I, from what I saw, he can create separation, had quick feet. I thought he caught well in traffic, had soft hands, thought his uh, blocking was decent. Uh, but he does have an issue with some drops there, so don't like that. But this is a kid we talk about bringing in those guys and maybe kind of like your stole, right? He can block, he can catch, you can do all those things. Not the greatest at uh, any of them, really. But I think, hey, the... It's an open competition right now. You got Azoma, obviously, behind Goddard. And then, you know, you got guys like Cal Katera back there, Albert O. Um, and obviously, you know, guys like EJ Jenkins, Noah Togi, I will get a chance. But Castles comes in and he'll get a chance to compete. We'll see how he does and see if Cal Katera or anybody wants to step it up. Now, up next, we got a couple of defensive players. And first, we got ourselves a safety. Oh, yeah. And I really like this kid. Andre Sam out of LSU. He's played for McNeese State, Marshall, and got some stats here from LSU. But um, look, you can see 10 passes deflected, four interceptions there. And this was a kid that I thought, man, just laying that hammer down on people. I, it was fun to watch him. And he last year, when thrown at, he had a 65.5 passer role. Opposing quarterbacks had a 65.5 passer rating. And he had five passes deflected, an interception, or I'm sorry, three interceptions. So I thought that he did a uh, pretty damn good um, and four, five, nine speed. So he's not the fastest, but he's got that straight line speed. One of those hybrids too. I feel like he could probably be listed as a defensive back too, because I think he could help you a little bit in the nickel, but he's a very physical dude. I thought he had great ball skills. Kind of seemed like he really could fit what we're doing here. You know, just the way that, you know, he could be that deep safety. He could be that box safety. He could be that nickel. I thought that, you know, he could really fill that role that we're looking for. And he plays wild, so he needs coached up. And that's one of the things that a lot of players, you know, we're looking at, you know, at Sidney Brown when we talk about him. I think, uh, hey, look, with some good coaching, the sky is the limit. Now we're going to finish it off with the seventh guy that was an undrafted free agent signing. And this was my second fit here. And I thought this kid, now if you heard the show, I said could be a sixth, seventh, maybe undrafted. But I thought he should have maybe gone drafted. But I understood just because of the fact that, you know, he's kind of a tweener and that Jalen Carter kind of depth in that role, but obviously Jalen Carter does it well, but, you know, playing that three, four technique kind of, you know, going through the line there in the odd and even fronts where he's a pass rushing D tackle. We'll put it that way. He could play DN in the odd fronts, D tackle in the even fronts, but you know, obviously a little skinny for a D tackle, a little heavy for a pass rusher, but I think he does both those things well, can back up, you know, guys like Milton Williams, Moro with Jomo, kind of fitting that mold that the Eagles are always looking for. So I thought he was perfect. And we talked about, you know, this dude, you know, he doesn't have maybe the, you know, most speed. And that's why I think he fits that role perfect, but he's got a great spin move. I thought he got, had great get off. I thought that, you know, he had good hands. I thought, um, you know, he was good against the run, too. So this was somebody, for me, why not use that sixth pick on? And if he goes undrafted, go get him. And, well, Howie, I guess you're listening because we got two out of the seven undrafted guys. And then we got ourselves seven out of nine of the draft picks were my guys. And for you sickos that have been tuning in, you heard about all of them. It was so funny watching them all get drafted. I'm like, holy crap, I've got videos for all these guys. And all the graphics already ready. I was like, thank you, Howie. 
because it was still insane, even with those graphics. So wild. But now let's take a look at the updated depth chart. Love to hear your thoughts on those undrafted free agent signings. Who do you think makes the team? Or who do you think just completely bombs it here at this rookie camp, whatever? But those undrafted kids will be here unless they're let go after camp. Somebody makes the team. I'll keep you up to date with all that. That will be on the 5th and 6th. So let's look at the updated depth chart here. Now, take a look here. Anyone in green was a free agent signing or traded for. And then looking at the Kelly green with the white outline, those are your draft picks. Anyone in gray is your undrafted free agents. You can see the defense here. Obviously, Gabe Hall, Andre Shams, the only two defensive players, but you can see them in at their spots. I was explaining this earlier, but if you missed this, the reason where edge and linebacker meet, that their depth is open because those depth guys can play both positions. Jay Lickson, I think he's, you know, a project, so he could definitely dabble all over the place, a former safety. Then you look at the D-backs and safety. Same thing goes where they meet. Those are versatile defensive backs that can play multiple roles. So keep that in mind. And uh, look, I think you've got a lot of talent here with guys that, whoo, baby, got me very excited. Those draft picks, obviously, the free agent signings. But let me know how you're feeling about how this roster is filling out. Then on the offense, you can see I added in Kendall Milton, Keaton, Castles, Donqua, Ayedze. But as I mentioned, I was not adding in the tryouts because we're going to see if they can even make the squad. If they do, they'll get added. They'll get a deeper breakdown. But you can see the guys that were undrafted free agents. Let me know your favorite position battles that are coming up. We'll be breaking it all down. I cannot wait. Showing you the defense with all those great graphics. And I know you're ready for it. The cap space, all that stuff's coming your way. But don't fear. I didn't leave out the special teams. And I made a new little graphic for this one, too. Because you're going to have a lot more guys in the offseason. So you see our kicker, punter holder, and long snapper there. Now I've got our punt returner, kick returner. You've got it going down. So, Punt returners, you got Covey, Smith, Rogers, DeGene, Smith. Obviously, Devontae is emergency situations, but you've got someone there if you need. And then Tilly Keaton can help you in both return games. Same as Aeneas Smith, as you see, he's backing up Rogers as kick returner. Shipley, Hall, Campbell, Gainwell is an emergency guy as well. So you've got dudes that'll be competing and anyone else. You know, if any of these tryouts make it, there are guys with return ability, as I mentioned. So We'll see if they make it. I, again, will add them to this depth chart, but wanted to keep that updated for you guys. Would love to hear your thoughts, but got to get rolling. If you got anything from this video, do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. You can always subscribe. Join us. I'll be live hopefully tomorrow. I'm trying to do cat videos. I'm trying to get all this stuff, but I wanted to get this video out. I want you to know all these guys. And if anybody else signs and makes a team, whatever, we will break it all down. But Hope you're all having yourselves a great Monday. If you need anything, it doesn't have to be about football. Always here for you guys. I always, always am here for you guys because you're seriously always here for me. More than supportive. You guys were awesome throughout the pre and going through the draft. Uh, it was an amazing experience. Those live streams, breaking stuff down with you. Truly enjoyed it. Cannot thank you enough. But have yourselves a great rest of your day. Until next time, I'm Jimmy Smith, and this is On the Road to Victory. You all stay safe out there, and as always, say it with me now. Go Birds!